Okay, we have our four quart jars with our four soil samples. We've mixed them with water and some detergent, let them set overnight. And now we're going to measure the soil layers and hopefully get a decent estimate of the percent sand, silt, and clay. So we've got a Sharpie to mark the size of the jars. We've got a metric ruler so we can measure the layers accurately down to uh, millimeters. And we'll bring the first jar forward. I take the ruler and measure up from a piece of foam core that I put down next to the jar. The foam core is the same thickness as the glass at the bottom of the jar, so we're not measuring a layer of glass at the bottom. And it looks like we have a division layer about here, here at the top of the sand of the silt transition, and the top of the clay there. And it's difficult to see, but it looks like we have a division between silt and clay about halfway between the top of the sand and the top of all the soil altogether. So now we'll measure those thicknesses. So measuring up from the bottom of the soil sample we have a total of 70 millimeters thick of sediment with 60 millimeters thick of sand, another 5 millimeters thick of silt, and another 5 millimeters thick of clay. We just take the thickness of each of those soil layers divided by the total times 100 and that will give us an estimate of the percent sand, silt, and clay. We'll take a look at our second sample here next. On this sample, it looks like we've got a division about here, the top of the sand, top of all the soil here on top of the clay. Tough to see. But I think we have a division between the clay and the silt there. And so if we measure the thickness of those layers, looks like the sand layer is 55 millimeters, about another 10 millimeters for the silt layer, and another 4 millimeters for the clay layer. So I think we have 55 plus another 10 plus another 4, a total of 69 millimeters of sediment. So let's take a look at the next one. This sample and the next one, the third and the fourth samples here, didn't really have any sand in them. You can't see that here necessarily, um, but we could tell by feel when we collected these samples that there is essentially no sand. In other words, no grittiness to these samples whatsoever. So it looks like we ha have a division, I believe, between our silt and our clay there and the top of our clay layer there. So we have 50 millimeters thick of silt and another 25 millimeters thick of clay. 25 and 50. So we'll take those numbers divided by the total thickness of 75 to give us the percent silt and the percent clay. Take a look at the fourth sample. This fourth sample appears to be primarily clay. This is consistent with the way that this soil felt when we collected it from a wetland. The soil is very sticky and you could form a long ribbon with it, which is indicative of a high clay content. If you can see layering between silt and clay here, your eyesight's much better than mine. I can't see any difference in anything here, so my interpretation of this would be this is primarily a clay. So we have some very different soil textures here, very sand dominated soil on the left, and then a soil that's largely silt and clay, the third one, and a soil sample that is predominantly clay.